Hey guys, this is Post Production Pi. You know, it's been a little while since we've been posting on SR Lounge, at least some of our own tutorials. And I uh, don't want you guys to feel like that's because we're neglecting anybody or we're ignoring you guys. It's actually because we got a lot of great things in store. We've been working really hard hard on the site and some new features. And uh, we'll be revealing them shortly. But uh, just to keep you guys occupied until we actually release those things, we thought we'd go through a little Lightroom edit from one of our recent shoots. Now, this is a recent shoot that we took out at Laguna Beach in California. Let me go over the settings real fast. I'm going to hit I twice to bring up my camera settings. Uh, we shot this on a Canon 5D Mark II at 320th of a second on a 50mm lens at f2.0 ISO 200. And this is just about when the sun is setting. The sun is right about on the horizon. Uh, really nice, beautiful, soft light on, on the back of everything in the scene. It's really a gorgeous scene. And uh, you know, I often get asked the question how we kind of create these flares, and flares are really simple. Most of you probably know already how to do them, and for those that don't, all you got to do is basically shine a light source directly into the lens. Now in this scene, the light source is the sun, and so the sun is basically right on this horizon, and it's reflecting off the ocean, which is coming to the lens and kind of washing it out and giving it this nice tone. Now lens flares, if they're too strong, are going to overpower your image, so watch for that. But in this shot, it works out really well. So let's work through this image. I'm going to zero this out just to show you guys what a zeroed out RAW file looks like if you were to look at it um, from like a, a different type of editor that doesn't apply basic settings like Lightroom does. So it looks very flat. Let's hit I twice, or actually once, to remove our uh, information. And let's hit reset just to bring the standard Lightroom preset uh, or settings back to our image. Now, like we talked about before, we're going to start with our biggest adjustments first. My temperature is actually pretty close to where I want it. Um, I'm going to start with brightness just to get it up a little bit higher. Now let's go up to 70 because I know I'm going to bring it down a little bit with the black. So I'm going to adjust my blacks up because I do want this to be a contrasty image. If I wanted it to kind of have a vintage fade, I'd probably kill my blacks and then run con uh, the contrast down and apply fading. But let's post-produce this so it has kind of a nice pop to it. So we're going to go blacks up to 10. I want to pay close attention to the hair detail, make sure nothing is uh, clipped on her hair. And if I want to check in my, uh, basically my alerts, I can hit J so it brings up my highlight and my shadow clipping alerts. And you can see that none of her hair is clipped, so we're good. All right, so blacks is good right about there, brightness is good. Now I'm going to play with my temperature. I think it's the next biggest thing that needs to be adjusted. And what I'm noticing is that we do have too much warmth in this scene, a little bit too much red in it. So let's pull the tint down just a little bit towards green. And then what we're going to do is we're going to adjust temperature to kind of correspond. And we're just going to kind of balance it out so we have a little bit more greens in this. Um, I don't want to kill all the reds, but I want to get some of it out. And I still want it to kind of have that nice warm tone to it. So it's okay if it's a little bit on the, uh, the yellow end and the red side. What I don't want it to be is on the green side, which is like clear down here. So let's go about there. Let's adjust our temperature down a little bit more. And I'm seeing a little bit too much green, so I'm going to bring it to 16. And we're going to pull the temperature down a little bit to 4400. At this point, I'm going to adjust my brightness up again, just because uh, we made those changes to the temperature, and it kind of adjusted the overall luminosity. So we're going to bring the brightness up to about 80, and that looks good about there. Um, now let's add a little bit of clarity just to kind of bring out some of that mid-tone contrast. What I do want to avoid is you see this kind of highlight edge at the top the on the horizon line. If we go up too high, it's going to blacken, and we want to avoid that at all costs. So we're going to leave it around plus 20. And then we'll add a little bit of vibrance to it just to get a little more color. We could even take the uh, contrast up a tiny bit. Let's go about 35. And if we want, we can add a little more blacks. I think it's about good there. We don't want it to be too high because obviously when this does go to print, it's probably going to come out just a little bit darker. But let's also tweak our fill light. I'm just going to add a tiny bit of fill light. You know, one of the things that we're seeing a lot right now is uh, we're kind of seeing this faux HDR thing where people are taking fill light up really high and then uh, and getting all the shadow detail back. I feel like it's a really overdone effect and you want to be very careful with your fill light. The other thing you want to be careful of is recovery. Recovery, a little bit of it, it's great, but if you use too much it's going to have a major change on luminosity levels. Um, you're going to get some kind of postulization where kind of the graduation in colors doesn't look quite right. It's going to look unnatural. And it also causes color shifts because it's changing luminosity of the most intense colors. So if the most intense color is red, it's going to pull the red out. So we want to be careful not to go up too high. If you go up too high, your images become flat and you have all those issues that we talked about. At, a too, uh, at too low, then you have kind of 
uh, you know, it doesn't have very even highlight tones and stuff like that. So we want to use just a little bit to pull down the highlights a little bit, and then let's move on. I think it looks great right there. If it has a little bit too much red, you can play with it. What I'm going to do is actually drop our vibrance instead to the negative side. Um, I want to pull out just a tiny bit of that red while keeping the overall warmth. And so we're going to go to negative five actually. And it looks great right there. Let's go down and just adjust some of our other options. So we're going to close up these panels. I'm going to go down to my detail panel and we're going to sharpen. Now my default sharpening setting is um, around this. I go up to usually around 60 and then take my radius up to 1.5 and then detail up to 30. That's kind of my default for sharpening. And the best rule of thumb is just kind of zoom in at 100% and see if it looks sharp to you. You don't want to over sharpen because you're going to have these strong lines. Like if you take it up here, you're going to see every little pore in detail. So be careful not to over sharpen. But about 60 is really right about right. I might add it a little bit more to this image, just go up to maybe 70, take the radius up a little bit higher. But around there is kind of the our money spot. So let's pull it off. Let's zoom in to see if we have any. We don't really have any noise that we need to reduce. Um, the noise in here is very, it's not distracting, it's kind of appealing, so let's, uh, and it's also a very low amount of noise. We're at ISO 200, so we don't need to worry about that. Let's close that up. I'm going to do one last thing, which is we're going to adjust our vignette. And now for images like, images like this really work both ways. If you guys want a vignette, you can. What I would always recommend when you vignette is keep it very, very subtle. Um, you don't want your vignette ever looking like a vignette where you have, literally, it looks like the edges are blackened. But what is nice on some images is, is just having kind of a darkening feel to the edges, where basically the colors just kind of become more dark and saturated along the edges. It's really nice, works well to bring focus into the center of the image. What I'm going to do on this is check out how it looks with a reverse vignette. And once again, with reverse vignettes, again, you don't want to go too high because you go too high and it looks like your edges are white. But what I wanted to do is just even out all the tones in from basically the center to the edge of the image. So it just has this very nice bright poppy feel to it. And at this point, I really like the look of it. I'm going to keep it about 31 amount, and then we're going to move the midpoint to about 25. So the midpoint is basically pulling in. It's, it's how far the effect is going in. So if we go to the midpoint of zero, basically it's adjusting from the edge all the way to the center of the image. At a midpoint of out here, it's only affecting the edges. So if we if we run the vignette up high and we just pull it out to the edge, you'll see that only the corners are affected. When we start pulling in the midpoint, it just affects further and further into the center. So let's go back to where we were. We were about 20 and about, let's see, about 30 on this. And I think that looks great right there. I think everything else is good, and let's check it out. So here is our final, and here was our before, where we started from. So we've we've done a lot to the image. It's been very quick to do this on your own and probably only take 30 seconds and we've made the image really pop and stand out. Again, here's that after image and here is the before. So great job guys. Hope you guys enjoyed.